Abraham Lincoln, 16th President of the United States, was born near Hogdenville, Kentucky, on February 12, 1809. His family moved to Indiana when he was seven, and he grew up on the edge of the frontier. He had very little formal education, but read voraciously when not working on his father's farm. A childhood friend later recalled Lincoln's manic intellect and the sight of him red-eyed and tousle-haired as he pored over books late into the night. In 1828, at the age of 19, he accompanied a produce-laden flatboat down the Mississippi River to New Orleans, Louisiana, his first visit to a large city, and then walked back home. Two years later, trying to avoid health and finance troubles, Lincoln's father moved the family to Illinois. After moving away from home, Lincoln co-owned a general store for several years before selling his stake and enlisting as a militia captain defending Illinois in the Black Hawk War of 1832. Lincoln didn't see direct combat during the short conflict, but the sight of corpse-strewn battlefields at Stillman's Run and Kellogg's Grove deeply affected him. As a captain, he developed a reputation for pragmatism and integrity. After the war, he studied law and campaigned for a seat on the Illinois State Legislature. Although not elected in his first attempt, Lincoln persevered and won the position in 1834, serving as a Whig. Abraham Lincoln met Mary Todd in Springfield, Illinois, where he was practicing as a lawyer. They were married in 1842 over her family's objections and had four sons. Only one lived to adulthood. Lincoln, a self-described prairie lawyer, focused on his all-embracing law practice in the early 1850s after one term in Congress from 1847 to 1849. He joined the Republican Party in the ongoing argument over sectionalism in 1856. A series of heated debates in 1858 with Stephen A. Douglas, the sponsor of the 1854 Kansas-Nebraska Act over slavery and its place in the United States, forged Lincoln into a prominent figure in national politics. Lincoln's anti-slavery platform made him extremely unpopular with Southerners, and his nomination for president in 1860 enraged them. November 6, 1860, Lincoln won the presidential election without the support of a single Southern state. Talk of succession bandied about since the 1830s took on a serious new tone. The Civil War was not entirely caused by Lincoln's election, but the election was one of the primary reasons the war broke out the following year. Lincoln's decision to fight rather than let the Southern states succeed was not based on his feelings towards slavery. Rather, he felt it was his sacred duty as President of the United States to preserve the Union at all costs. His first inaugural address was an appeal to the rebellious states, seven of which had already succeeded, 
to rejoin the nation. His first draft of the speech ended with an ominous message, shall it be peace or the sword? He didn't issue his famous Emancipation Proclamation until January 1, 1863, after the Union victory at the Battle of Antietam. The Emancipation Proclamation, which was legally based on the President's right to seize the property of those in rebellion against the state, only freed slaves in southern states where Lincoln's forces had no control. Nevertheless, it changed the tenor of the war, making it, from the northern point of view, a fight both to preserve the Union and to end slavery. In 1864, Lincoln ran again for president. After years of war, he feared he wouldn't win. Only in the final months of the campaign did the exertions of Ulysses S. Grant, the quiet general now in command of all the Union armies, begin to bear fruit. A string of heartening victories buoyed Lincoln's ticket and contributed significantly to his re-election. In his second inauguration speech, March 4, 1865, he set the tone he intended to take when the war finally ended. His one goal, he said, was lasting peace among ourselves. He called for malice towards none and charity for all. The war ended only a month later. On April 14, 1865, while attending a play at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., Abraham Lincoln was shot by a Confederate sympathizer, John Wilkes Booth. The assassination was part of a larger plot to eliminate the Northern government that also left Secretary of State William Seward grievously injured. Lincoln died the following day, and with him, the hope of reconstructing the nation without bitterness.